my mom was having her mastectomy and I told the teacher, you know, um, I'll probably be gone for a couple days uh, because, you know, I want to be there for her recovery and the surgery and all that stuff. He was like, cool. Man, let me tell y'all something. I don't even know if you still work there, but I got my degree now, so it's all good. Y'all, I, I don't think I passed the test in that man's class and he still passed me. Yeah, you what? He stick with a C, which I, I'll take a C. Yeah. I take a C, sir, and I honestly feel like I feel like because he was like, man, this is a good kid, mm-hmm. and I can't fail him. His mom is sick, so it kind of was, sick. you know, so it kind of was like, well, God, I mean, I guess it did work out because <laughs> if my mom was sick, I probably wouldn't have passed this math class, mm-hmm. and I was able to, you know, graduate on time because that one math class was just what was holding me back a little bit, mm-hmm. and um, went for her surgery. She had only one. Uh, breast removed, so she just had a regular mastectomy. She didn't have a devil because it was only in this one, in the left breast. And uh, she had the mastectomy. After that, they was like, everything should be good. Cancer free, this, that, and the third. Man, y'all, if y'all, um, I have these segments on my Instagram I call WTF with Josh, and I feel like it's just how my whole life has been. After she had her surgery, they said everything was good, uh, this, that, and the third. Like two weeks later, she goes back in and they're like, hey, um, how's recovery going? Cool, cool, cool. That's what's up. Um, yeah, that didn't get it all. So we're going to have to do yeah, like. Nice. Or the same one. That same that same side, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that didn't work out. So we're going to have to do like uh, another couple months of radiation. At first, she only had chemo. She didn't have radiation. So radiation is a lot more aggressive than mm-hmm. chemo. Chemo is a, is very aggressive, but chemo is more them like being hooked up to an IV and just kind of chilling. You know, you don't feel any pain as it's getting a port part hurts because mm-hmm. they have to stick it into. But you kind of just sit there. We just laugh and scroll on Instagram, and watch movies and stuff like that. Radiation is a little bit more intense because it's really that light is trying to burn all of the rest of those cancerous cells out your body. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't too excited about that, but of course we like, when you're in that kind of situation, which it sucks, but it's like, what you gonna do? I mean, we're halfway there now, like they've already took your breast, mom. We kind of have to. So she went through the radiation and um, after, so that was, she had the surgery. Summer classes were in June. She had to start radiation in August. I want to say, mm-hmm. and um, she went through the radiation, and then by September, maybe she started radiation. She had sur- there we go. She had surgery in June when I had that summer class. She started radiation like end of July, and then by September seventeenth was when she got the ring the bell and was officially cleared mm-hmm. of breast cancer. Now, <laughs> so all that happened. That was a great gift for me because excuse me, my birthday is on September 29th. Libra season is almost here. Shout out to us. Um, best y'all sign, know what y'all want. Best sign in the zodiac. You know y'all what I'm saying? Know what y'all want. We don't know what we want, but we have we have a finesse about figuring it out that mm-hmm. a lot of people like. Y'all still don't know what y'all want. <laughs> I have yet to meet a, a male Libra that knows. We are very indecisive people. Very. We are very indecisive, but it's a, it's a blessing also. How? It's a gift and a curse. How? It's a gift and a curse. Because I'm very indecisive, but when I make up my mind, it's nothing that can take me off that track. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if once it's made up, like, even my friends be like, John, you so. And I'm like, nah, because you said that. So let's stick to the plan. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like veering off the plan. If, if, if we find the answer, that's what it is. We don't need to jump everything around. September 17th, that she got to ring a little bell. So, of course, that was a great day. Um, I probably gave the best tours of my life on that day. Oh, uh, I probably was like, hey, how you doing? I'm Josh. My mom just beat cancer today. <laughs> I'm Josh, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Delaware State University. You found the net 1890. Um, <laughs> what are they called? The Hornets. Hornets. Shout out to Hornets. See, I knew that. You did. Yeah. And um, that was just a great gift. For me, because I was like, oh my God. Because the one thing I thought about was like, what if my mom doesn't get to see me graduate? Oh gosh. You know what I mean? Like, my mom, neither her parents got to see her graduate college. So I just kind of felt like, oh my God, don't tell me I'm going down the same boat. 
Like, my mother's not going to see me. Because, Daddy, I love you. My pops wasn't the father that came to the school and sat in the administration building and waited in those long financial aid lines and stuff That's like that. Like, he was the one that was like, hey, we're homecoming. Who y'all playing? Morgan? All right, we'll come. <laughs> me and the boy, you coming up there. You know what I'm saying? I'll be at the game. Homecoming. He ready. We're homecoming. When, when this? When that? My mother was really the one in there like, all right, well, he can't get his keys unless we got $2,500. Like, okay, well, let's go figure this out. We come back some type of way. She got that money. Um... So that was a big thing for me where I was like, bruh, like what? So after that happened in September, I was like, oh man, this is exciting because I graduated in a couple months. So that was like a great birthday gift, um, a great early graduation gift. And um, graduation came, graduation was awesome. It's funny, her hair just started growing back so she had like, like her little, 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 little curly bush and stuff like that. And it's funny because one of my cousins caught like a really, really good picture of her. Um, at my graduation, just like with her hands up in the air, just like eyes closed and stuff like that's like one of my favorite just pictures. Happy, right? Just one of my favorite pictures, and um, so that was dope. And uh, then so she, she's been cancer free. This year will be um seven years. Uh, so of course she like my mom is wrote a book. My mom is like starting. She uh, wrote a book. Yep. yep. What's the name of this book? Uh, Break into Brilliance. All right, the by yep. Yolanda Watkins. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. well, so I'll something right here at some point so yep. you guys can go support his mama. So she started a um, foundation also called The Pink Shoe Journey, and that's basically to help aid um, families, women, anybody that's going on their breast cancer journey. Because one thing about breast cancer, I think a lot of people, of course, the patient, we want to give them a lot of support too, but it's not a lot of support for the for, caretakers. Yeah. And you need, like, I feel like I need therapy just for being a caretaker in a sense. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times as a caretaker, you don't want to feel like you need that support because it's like, I'm not the one going to do this. So I should need somebody to mm -hmm. pat me on the back to do what I'm, but it's hard because I mean, you're going through a lot of, so I could think all my mother would eat was salads from KFC. Salads? She couldn't eat anything else. Salads? All she would eat is salads. First of all. <laughs> all she would eat is salads. Let's run this back. All she would eat is salads. KFC sell salads? I think they do. <laughs> I think they do. I think so. They might not, but I think they do. But it was one of them, y'all know I used to live in Oxford Hill, man. So on that little strip by Rivertown, it was from one of them, KFC. Uh, it little, was somebody on, y'all know right across from Rivertown. It was right there. The <laughs> but literally, that's all she would eat. And she didn't have an appetite mm -hmm. for nothing, man. They was trying to get her like on the medicinal marijuana. And she's like, I ain't smoking no weed. I'm like, I better get that car. <laughs> so she just wouldn't cheat. Listen, she was not feeling it. And then she, not with the Mary she Jane. Was, yo, she was not. I was like, Mom, but if you need it, she was like, I ain't. Boy, I tried to smoke one time in college. I thought I was going to kill myself. I, <laughs> but I'm like, she was like losing so much weight mm -hmm. that they was like, look, we got to figure something out. So she used to have to like drink her drink her food to keep her. What did she do? Insure? She had insure, and then they gave her like some like other special stuff. Mm -hmm. And she like had a drink and something like that. And it was like liquid food almost yeah. like that was all like, the nutrients yeah stuff. so i was like okay that's different and um so yeah since then she started me like her and my godmom and started the foundation um but the, like i said the pink shoe journey is more so for anybody that is going through cancer period and the thing i loved about when she rang the bell um it is like facebook y'all like when everybody's there and they ring the bell and the doctors are crying all the nurses are crying the family's crying like i was like oh my god i feel like i'm a susie g coleman commercial <laughs> <laughs> much, bro. Like, oh my god. And um, so she rang the bell and did all that fun stuff. And um, after that, I was like, okay, this is yes, no, it's, it's actually my, my crying father. I'll call him back. <laughs> <laughs> he must have heard me talking about yeah. it, right? Um, and after she rang the bell, you know, all of that was dope. And the one thing that the head doctor said, he was like, you know, I want to, you know, come in and tell all of you guys, you talk to me, my sisters, and everybody, my dad, my mom, dad, all of y'all are breast cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. And he was like, a lot of times we only say the survivor is the person that was actually inflicted with the, the disease. But if you were there, if you wiped a tear, if you gave a shot, if you helped up the stairs, if you sat through a six hour chemo session, if you, you're a survivor too. Mm -hmm. And I never look at it like that. And that really was like, wow, you know what? 
That's dope. Yeah. That's 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 really dope. And uh, so my mom started all her organizations and things because I would go to chemo and some people would be sitting by themselves. And some, so I'd just be like, Mom, you mind? She'd be like, no, because I always say, I'd be like, Mom, you know, I don't belong to y'all. I belong to the world. Y'all just help me get here. So i just walk up and just start talking. Hey, how you doing? You know, because I'm like, it's already a traumatic experience. And to sit there by, by yourself. yourself. And in my mom's room, she would have to be in the glass room because we'd be in that joint. Right? Me and my sister, my other sister, my brother, my nieces and nephews, because we just didn't want her to feel, mm-hmm. you know, and then especially, you know, her mom died from this disease i can imagine what was going on yeah. in her head also so we at least wanted to show her you, you have all the support mm-hmm. in the world um so she started all those foundations um here's the crazy part on today's episode of wtf with josh <coughs> episode mom's breast cancer journey about maybe not even six months ago um i'm home Deja vu. My parents said, we need to talk. Sit down. And honestly, I'm like... Again? Bruh. Hmm? Once you... That's the thing with cancer. Once cancer is in your body, it's kind of like... In your body? It's just kind of there. And, and it can really move around. It can, got, cause like they did all the tests to see, did it go here, did it go there? Thank God it didn't go anywhere. Um, then, but just a couple of months ago, um, it had traveled and it was a very small amount. I'm not a doctor y'all, I'm sorry, so I don't know the terms. But basically um, in her, uh, they saying that they thought she might have ovarian cancer. Oh gosh. So I'm like, y'all have got to be kidding me. And in my head, I'm like, you know, I can kind of make a joke out of everything. So I'm like, I don't even know what color ribbon the ovarian cancer thing. Y'all been wearing pink all this time. Now we got to like, oh my God. Like, so she was like, um, they told me, you know, what they suggest, this, that, and the third. So literally like a month after that, she had the surgery scheduled and they, her ovaries? they cleaned everything out. They cleaned everything out. Um, so she had to have this, that surgery again, which felt like deja vu because it was right in Washington, D.C., right at GW again. So we're literally almost sitting in the identical seats that we sat in seven years ago mm-hmm. when she was getting her mastectomy. Like, this is weird. Like, it just it just felt exactly the same. Um, thank God with that, everything worked out. Mm-hmm. 100% cancer-free. But it was just interesting that it, like, popped back up. Mm-hmm. And I think... It taught me a lot because some emotions that I thought I had kind of worked through, I didn't. And some stuff that I thought it would have upset me, it didn't. Okay. Because to me, I'm like, hey, listen, I'm a very spiritual person. I believe in God. So I'm like, if he did it before, he can do it again. Yeah. If you didn't let stage four breast cancer take her out, yeah. you're not about to let no little 2% possibility ovarian cancer do it. And this is the thing too, y'all. My mom's so secretive. She didn't even tell us that she had stage one breast cancer. I forgot to put that part in there. Okay. She didn't tell us until probably like a year and a half now. Mm-hmm. And y'all know how I found out one time we was at this church service and they was saying something. I don't know if she won't give me testimony, but somebody was saying something. And they said stage four breast cancer. And me and my sisters looked at each other like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> we couldn't wait to get out of church. It was like, yeah, out. Mom. <laughs> And that's when we had to have the other conversation that yes, it is stage four. And I'm like, oh my God, why the heck did you tell us that? She's like, well, I didn't want to, you know, scare you guys and this, that, and the third. So it was like, mom, but she could have told us that. But I guess I, it is a good thing she didn't because that day they sat me down on the couch. If she would have told me that, I told yeah. y'all my mind was already morbid. It just would have been like, well, yeah. here it is. If this, because I mean. You would have killed her in your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I know people who, didn't have a chance against stage four breast. Some of my friends, family members, didn't stand a chance against stage four, any type of cancer, especially breast cancer. Mm-hmm. So I just really felt like, even when this other cancer thing came up, I'm like, hey mom, you here for a reason. Like I said, if God didn't let that take you out, he not about to let this take you out. You know what I mean? This is just another chapter that you can kind of uh, write in. So now my sisters have went and did like all of the 
testing? All the testing and stuff, and they did find that the gene is in my family. Um, so now my both my sisters are kind of at the process of figuring out what to do. Um, now my mom does want to go and get the other breast removed also because she like to take it because it is a possibility it'll come back in this one. Yeah. So she just wants to get rid of it, and now my sisters have to decide the best course of action for them. Both their husbands are telling them if the gene is carried get them cut off yeah. they're gonna reconstruct some new joints you know what i mean a lot of i mean angelina jolie did it you know a long time ago because the gene was in her family and people was like what do you mean she didn't have breast cancer but it made sense because if the gene is there yeah. you cut them off they put them bad boys the same size they can make them smaller oh, they can make them bigger they can make you know i just go to my mom's consultations and stuff and i'm like you about to get breast implants like <laughs> But it is a hard process because right now, I mean, the chest is like mine. Mm -hmm. So you have to put the thing in it that pumps it up and you have to wear that for a couple months so that they can get an implant in. So it is a very hard process. So she hasn't got fully this one there. It's just still, you know, her little, her little wool wound mm -hmm. and it's burnt from the radiation, you know? So, but I think one of my sisters, they said, you know, they have to decide if you want more kids before mm -hmm. you can. Have that? Yeah. My older sister, though, she got everything cut, yeah. snip, tied. Her oldest is going to ninth grade this year. So, Ashley wants another child? That's what her husband talked about now. She said she didn't, but after they told her, she would need to know. Mm -hmm. So now she's kind of like on a medical crunch almost. Like, like let's get this. Either, and it's not that they have to know in a certain time to remove it. It's more so that they need to know if she is, because then it'll give them a different course of action. Yeah. Then, okay, if you are gonna have another child, we need to hold off and do this. If yeah. you don't want no more children, we can just go ahead and do this, start giving you these pills, this, that, and the third, but because she's breastfed her other two children, they're like, well, we need to make sure that you're not got no kids. And because she's still, what, she's 32? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like getting the two beside after your first child. They're like, oh no. <laughs> That's their thing. And then that made me do my research because like I told them, um, I'm like, why well, don't go to them appointments? And they was like, Josh, cause you a boy. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. So, but I was like, mom, I don't know. I was like, I still, like I told y'all, I'm a very morbid thinker. And I'm like, I just want to know that I know. And it's like a 1% chance that men can get breast cancer, but men can get breast cancer. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So too, I was like, look, y'all don't believe, like I get, I'm not saying, I'm like, but I got the craziest mind out of all y'all and y'all doing all this, you know, testing and all this, uh, you know, proactive things for your health. And then I'm like, I'll be the one to turn 40 and be like, how I end up with breast cancer? You know, <laughs> like, like on, that's just how my life work out where I'll be like stuff that don't happen to normal people happen to me. So I'm like, listen, I want some information too. I want to see what are the chances because I'm like, it's a 1% chance just to get it. It got to be a high 1% chance when it's in your family. Okay. You, you know what I mean? So yeah. just that kind of thing and just trying to like stay on top of my health and different things like that. And, um, you know, seeing, but the one thing I always tell people, like, ladies, them little checks really do that stuff. Because if my mom hadn't noticed that lunch, she said it wasn't even a big lump, she just noticed it. If she might have waited a week, in six months, she had no cancer to stage four. In six months, bruh. So, literally, like, I always, that's her thing too, just tell it, check yourself. You know what I mean? Always go. Don't just be like, oh, no, nah, it's nothing. If you feel anything that feel like it's not your breast, go to the doctors man it's, you you better rather be safe than sorry and a conversation with my mom the only reason that i think my grandma didn't make it from that one she went way too late mm -hmm. my mom is from a small town in north carolina called rich square north carolina that has a population of about 825 people in 2019. Mm -hmm. so imagine how many it had back in the 60s and 70s when my mom was there and my mom said medical care just wasn't there, I mean, my grandma probably didn't even have insurance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like she didn't, wasn't able to do the proactive things that now with all the medicine that we can do. You know what I mean? And I think even ladies, just keep keep in mind with that. My mother be passing out little things that it's funny because she had them like in our shower. Mm -hmm. And there was a little thing to show you like how to check and lift this arm and mm -hmm. go around this way. And I just used to always laugh because when I still live with them, I used to like go in the shower and like as soon as I turn the water on and look up, it's just like, oh, it's titties. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, okay. Like, this is, this is interesting. But you know what I mean? Like that's the one thing I always tell people like stay up on your health because the way hers just popped up so fast, 
that can happen to anybody. My mother is not special. She ain't, you know what I mean? Like she was a fairly healthy person. My mom took walks. She rode the Metro, so she had to walk to her job all the time. You know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't like she was just sitting around not doing anything and this cancer just snuck up on her. She was living a very, very, very active life yeah. because even after that, she had to retire med medically because her job, she couldn't, like, her doctors was like, it just wouldn't, yeah. it just wouldn't make sense. stress on the body. That's Which funny. then worked out, because now she was able to retire, and now she can live her live best her life, life, and yeah. look at her businesses, and, you know, she texts me at 8 o'clock, and I'm like, why are you up? And she's like, oh, I'm just out picking up some stuff. <laughs> like, so I, it's good to see her happy now, because when my mom was working, I didn't feel like she was happy. I felt like she was doing just what she felt like she had to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like now she's got all of that baggage out of the way. Now she can really, like, Focus. Focus and live her life. Yeah. My sister, uh, my oldest sister, um, had breast, breast cancer as well, and she mm -hmm. had both of her breasts removed. Mm -hmm. And so far, she seems to be cancer free. And just like listening to you talk about how stressful it was and things like that, like I definitely feel terrible because she lives in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm not able to go to her appointments, I'm not mm -hmm. able to check to make sure. You know that whole process exactly was a lot is, for her. Exactly, you know what right, I mean? Like right. I'm getting secondhand, like, hey, how you know, I'll call like, how are you feeling today? Mm -hmm. and she's like, I feel so weak. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't eat. I'm tasting the medicine in my tongue, mm -hmm. like all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, you know, this conversation is very insightful to just kind of um, see, you know, get a a firsthand feel from someone that's you know close to it, right? Like, directly, right, 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 affected by it, like how you felt. Right. Do you, do you feel like therapy would have helped you oh definitely definitely so, so why did you get therapy well because then let me tell you something then uh i told you i'm a very private person mm -hmm. uh my parents raised us in a mindset what happens in my house stays in my house and like i told them that's a very problematic that's very way this to is, be this is a comp so the majority of the people that i've um interviewed so far just happen to be black mm -hmm. or hispanic mm -hmm. and that's been a common thread mm -hmm. is the Mm -hmm. to no counseling people, mm -hmm. you know you're encouraged not to see counseling mm -hmm. but they they went on their own and they you know sought counseling and stuff mm -hmm. like that and like, it is problematic in our community where we feel like it's not okay to share yep. how you feel with yep. a stranger which is the best thing because then it doesn't sit and manifest into other things exactly. you don't end up taking that out on other people exactly who have nothing to do with the situation exactly yeah. and that's why i tell people i'm like they're your feelings you have to feel them yes. if you just stuff them in a box or act like nothing is wrong. Like those people, I, I, I ain't mad at you. I tell you, I'm mad. Yeah. It might be petty, call me sensitive, call me, I'm mad. What you said made me feel some type of way. I just want to talk about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now that's a good thing too. Um, my oldest sister is a psychotherapist. So her kind of bringing and she that. She wrote a book too. What's yep, her book? The Mental see. Detox. Okay, be home. Yeah, drop my, that right my mom's there. book, The Breaking the Brilliance, actually is with my sister. She did a, um, I don't know the correct word, but she did a, not a series, but she got like a couple of ladies together mm -hmm. and each of them have a chapter. Okay. You know what I mean? So, um, but my sister really helped break that stigma um, with us, because like I told you, come from a church type of family, put it on the altar, go pray, go. Yes, that's very true. But sometimes you need to get it out other ways too. And that's one thing my sister always says, there's nothing wrong with the altar yeah. and there's nothing wrong with the couch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I mean, to the point, my mom in therapy now, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking for a new therapist now, let me email me back yet, but I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to call her back. You know what I mean? But that type of stuff is helpful because a lot of times we go through so much stuff and then you get angry and hard because you feel like, don't nobody know what I've been through. Yeah. Don't nobody, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, let it out. That's why I cry. Because I feel like when I cry, man, I feel like I'm releasing BS, drama, all the stuff that I've been just holding on to. And it's like, I'm gonna stop myself from crying. Boy. If I gotta cry, I'm gonna let it out. I'm gonna let it out. You know what I mean? And I think that's the one thing I appreciated with my parents that they would never like that. Like, Oh, get up off that floor, boy. Boys don't cry. Da 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 da. This that and the third. It's like, no, yes they do. Yeah, they do. That hurt. Everybody I, cries. I just I just fell down the stairs on my head, y'all, and people would tell a boy, get boys up. don't cry, get up. Toxic. No, nah, I mean don't keep crying about it. Tomorrow don't be like, I hit my head and that. No, but if you need your moment, have your moment. A lot of times people parents only do it well. 
You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't baby that boy up. Don't, da 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 And then we wonder why us men end up so macho and then we can't open up when we find a lady we like. Yeah. You know what I mean? But therapy is definitely recommended to everybody. I mean, I, I think if I could have started therapy at a very, very younger age, I wish I could have, but I'm like, I'm only 27 now. I plan on living until I'm 100, so I could, I could get a good uh, 50, 60 years of therapy. <laughs> okay, so at this point, we are gonna have our dessert. Can you guess what you think I got for us? Dessert, dessert. Um, can I can? No. <laughs> I was on the road today, y'all. I messed up. Right here. Was that like lemon meringue? Heck no, I hate anything lemon. Oh, she gave me. Is it pistachio? No, it's a uh, matcha. I'm, a, I'm about to say, I'm gonna stop guessing, y'all, because I'm. Everything <laughs> <laughs> I guess. It looked like we got advertised for this drink. We both know, got right? on the green, too. Yes. <laughs> All right, this is our dessert, guys. This is matcha cheesecake. All right, so. Matcha cheesecake. Yeah. Mm. That's a lot of light. Fancy. Yeah. All right, so let me know. This is my first time having it as well. I like it. It doesn't taste any different. It took me a minute to see what it tastes like, because I'm like, it tastes like cheesecake. <laughs> That's how I feel like. I'm like that's why I was trying to let my taste bro yeah, get together. Uh, I'm like, I mean, it tastes like, it tastes like cheesecake. cheesecake. It's it just green. It doesn't taste like there's anything like extra. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I like it. What are some um, advice that you'd like to give to anyone um, who's on the receiving end, like having to take care of a, um, a parent or a family member that has breast cancer? Like, what are some tips that you can offer that you wish that someone sat down and said, hey, like, this is, what to, this is what to expect and this is how you deal with it. Got you. Um, I think the first tip I would give is just be honest with yourself because I think sometimes when we try to put on this strong front, um, it's not honest. Like I said, you have to feel your feelings. So I think, yes, we want to be strong for them and we don't want to be crying. Like, hey, mommy, you okay? But you do want to still show some of that vulnerability because that vulnerability shows that you care. And yes, you might think, of course they know I care. Oh yes, they know, you know, but sometimes I think as a caretaker, we try to be so strong that when you try to put on that strong front, you kind of mask that vulnerability that's really, hey, look, I'm scared. This is scary. I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't, you know what I mean? And I think because my mama, she would do, she journaled every day every day and last october she's gonna put all this into a book too but she typed all her facebook on facebook all her journal entries wow. from every single day and i had never even read some of them so i'm reading them joints like woo, like she like talking about us and talk you know and today i you know this that and the third um so i would say being vulnerable and really talking because a lot of that stuff my mom wrote about was stuff i wanted to talk to her about but i didn't want to be Mm -hmm. Or I didn't want to be. All right, yeah. I mean, you know, we already know you have cancer, yeah, so I don't. I, I, yeah, yeah, you know. And I think that's the thing that we think too. Where it's like, well, I don't want to say nothing because or say something there because I know in my head it's like, well, I don't want to bring that up because in my head, in my picture, I told you I'm morbid. You just like they gonna drop dead as soon as I ask this mm -hmm. question, or I'm gonna stress her out and she gonna be like, ah, I'm coming home, <laughs> you know? Like so, it's like man, I don't want to talk about that i don't want to ask her that and i think sometimes we have to remember yes they're going through stuff but they're still people and they still want to feel and i think sometimes as a caretaker you can kind of turn them into a what's the right what's the right word like a not a baby but like you know you just kind of want to cuddle them yeah. and you kind of are you okay do you need to sit down is everything okay do you need anything like your voice even changes you know what i mean like you, you kind of get into that baby caretaker mode where sometimes it's just don't do that yeah. because that's what my mom would always say sometimes like y'all I'm okay but you like oh, you can't be okay you have cancer yeah. but it's like no you really might be okay today you know so I think just being honest with yourself um showing them that you care literally not just 
assuming that they know it. You know, yeah. being vulnerable, checking up on, on on them, checking up on the caretakers too. You know, because I think that's why I was so upset with a lot of my family members because yeah. I felt like y'all not even checking up on us to see how we're doing. You know what I mean? And I see other people like doing all this stuff with my mom and I'm like, y'all blood, y'all not even... I can't call or text a brother or see how you're doing or see, you know, hey, Josh, let me just take you out today. I just want to talk and see how you're doing. Because I think that might have took some of the me. I have to be by your side every day. Because if I'm by your side, nothing bad can happen to you. Yeah. But if I leave, as soon as I walk out the door, you, you might get short of breath and then yeah. I need to take you to the emergency room. But if somebody was kind of there, not even just on a therapy sense of just the, hey, bro, let me check up on you. Mm-hmm. How are you? You know, and not just one person. Mm-hmm. I think that would definitely... Um, help too, but you just gotta be sincere, man. Um, be sincere. If you don't want to do stuff, don't do it. Like I told y'all, I couldn't give my mom no shots. I couldn't. So me having, if I would have forced myself to give it to her, I probably had so much more trauma than I do now. Yeah. You know, so I had to accept the fact that even though my sister, I said, you know, shout out to Ed, she won't happy that me and my dad didn't want to get those shots. You know, like she kind of curped on us one time and was like, I have to do this. Y'all don't have to sit here and watch mommy scream. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to give her this shot because y'all won't, you know? And she kind of had a moment on us and it was like, (laughs) I'm still not giving that shot though. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I get it. I ain't doing it. But you have to be honest and transparent because she could have kept that to herself. And then seven years later, my sister could have a vendetta against me and my father because it's like, Nobody helped me get my meat and blood done. Mm-hmm. So I think communication with you and the actual person that has the cancer or whatever it is, as well as communication between the caretakers, because yeah. everybody's going to play a different role. Yeah. You know what I mean? So y'all have to communicate because even though we had some arguments about certain things, we had to be able to communicate it. And if we mm-hmm. didn't, like I said, you will hold that resentment like, you ain't even do that. You came home on the weekends, Josh. You know what I mean? I was yeah. here giving shots every day. Thank God that's not how she felt because we can have those talks. But you really have to be able to communicate with everybody. Communication is key to everything, man. And I think that's the thing I wish I had a little bit more of because I was scared to talk about certain stuff. Because I'm the type of person where I don't want to say church messed me up. But when they say life and death is in the power of the tongue, mm-hmm. some stuff I'm like, I don't want to say it out loud because then yeah. it's going to happen. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, Josh, you can't think like that. You need to actually get what it is that you need to say out in a healthy way. You know, so I would just say that communicating and really being vulnerable, showing the person that you care through that vulnerability. My sister used to give my mother that shot and cry while she was giving it to her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She, where well, I probably would have been like, let me not try to cry. Mm-hmm. And that, like, you know, so. Oh, that was a big piece, girl. My bad. <laughs> that was delicious. That was good. Communicate, be vulnerable, and feel your feelings. Yeah. Those would be my main three tips if I had to sum it up, y'all. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, Josh has his YouTube um, channel coming out. I'm going to place it right next to him. I'm also going to place his IG page. So if anyone is going through anything and they just want somebody to talk to that's experienced it, feel free to hit his inbox. And he's fine and single. And y'all, <laughs> enough about me. Um, one thing I did just want to say, though, this lady right here is... I don't even think she probably knows like how much of an inspiration that she was to my life. Um, She was always just my favorite teacher then, but the older I get, um, we don't get to see each other as much as I would like, but we communicate on social media all the time. But even driving over here, I was just thinking of all the stuff that I learned just in life, just from her. You know what I mean? I didn't know anything about Caribbean culture until her. I didn't know, you know, I'm, I'm American. My mom was from North Carolina and McKinney <laughs> Beach. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know anything about college until her. I didn't know anything about Greek life or the Divine Nine until her. You know what I mean? And and just driving over here today, I had like a 40 minute drive and I was just thinking like, yo, she really put me on to it. Like I just think when I'm like downloading soca music today or something, and I'm like, bro, like that's, you know what I mean? Yo. I'm getting to college and being like, Wow, my favorite teacher is Delta. You know what I mean? It's just that type of thing. So I'm just really thanking you. You know what I mean? Where you, which, I'm, I'm cutting all this. Yo, out. but <laughs> I appreciate it. You know what I mean? And just to really show you that she's been the same person mm-hmm. since, y'all. I'm pretty sure y'all know because she's. I'm. A, I'm. 
I'm gonna comment a picture of what she looked like at our eighth grade banquet. <laughs> banquet is just like this. I'm now probably like 20 pounds. She did not age at all. But, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for that. Because you, aside from, you know, all our crazy stuff, you really did, oh like, teach God, me. We, we were all bad. You really did teach me <laughs> we were a, all lot, bad. a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Ooh, so. cringe. All but, right. Thank you. Don't forget, we have to, we're going to have to follow Josh on his YouTube channel. I'm going to drop that. His IG page, and we're gonna drop that. And don't forget, once again, to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully, we'll have him back and we'll talk about something else because we have so much to talk about. All right. All right, guys. Bye.